you're welcome. If anyone across the world had been monitoring the headlines of last week, then they'd probably come away with thinking that India is not a pluralistic society anymore. Instead, we are insular, intolerant, and see the world through bigotry tinted lenses. This after an advertisement for a jewelry range which showed an interfaith marriage was withdrawn after boycott calls on social media. But is that the reality? What if the millions of interfaith marriages among Indians, including like mine between a Malayali Christian and a Punjabi Sikh, what if their reality? Can the alleged hurt sentiments of a vocal minority, be it Hindu or Muslim, decide the choices of the silent majority? Today we're going to highlight the other India, because by not speaking up, we the people are party to normalizing hate between communities and India needs to hear their voices too and joining us to share their stories are Natasha Badwar, a filmmaker and author, Smriti Lamek, journalist and craftivist, Dr. Kostav Dekka, assistant professor of political science at the Dibrugad University, Zara Raj Parwal, digital content creator, Athira and Shamim. Athira is a public policy professional and Shamim, her husband, is an entrepreneur. But let's start with Smriti. Smriti, oh, Smriti Lamek, what is your story? What's your reality? Uh, thank you for having me, Sarah. Um, you know, it's not just that I am an interfaith, that I'm in an interfaith marriage. Uh, there's an old song by Michael Murphy called, uh, I come from a long line of love. Um, my parents come from two different communities. My maternal grandparents were from two different communities. And my maternal grandfather had a Chinese grandmother. So, you know, I, um, I find this idea of interfaith marriage being unusual, uh, a very strange one, because um, I put in my own life, I don't know too many marriages from the same community. To my mind, this uh, uproar over this interfaith marriage is what is is new, strange, and not part of the India that I grew up in. And and so how did you get married? So uh, although my parents are from two different ethnic backgrounds, they're both Christian, uh, and they're both uh, very strong in their faith, uh, both believing Christians, if not church-going Christians. Um, and I remember when I met my husband and I uh, told them that I'd like to get married to him, um, it's not that I had anticipated trouble, really, but I didn't think they'd have queries. And strangely, the only query my mother had was that, you know, he's very ambitious and you're very ambitious. And how will your career ever get any, uh, you know, any face time if you marry a man who's equally ambitious? That was her only thought. It was not that he's a Hindu. Um, but, you know, I anticipated that we'd have a, a special, we get married under the Special Marriage Act and that would be it. But um, as it happens, uh, my husband's family didn't come around. Uh, we waited a couple of years, gave them time to get used to the idea, and they didn't. So we and and until then, my husband and I had only planned to have a, you know a simple registered wedding and a grand reception. And uh, frankly, the first step was my husband's. He said, you know what, your parents have dreamt of seeing their daughter walk down the aisle, have a white wedding, and. Um, you know, I don't want to deny them that they've been so supportive, waited two years, tried to reason with my family. So let's give them the white wedding that they want. And uh, when my parents heard about it, uh, they were so touched by this gesture that they said, you know, why should you why should you be the only one to have a wedding that, you know, that you dreamed of? Who? Why would you imagine that a man hasn't imagined what his wedding, you know, dreamt of a certain kind of wedding? So let's ensure that he gets the Hindu wedding too. And my husband is a Konkani. And my parents went out of their way to try and find a Konkani priest. Um, we couldn't find one in North India. We ended up finding a Tamil Brahmin priest. And uh, so I had a church wedding. I had um, our wedding. Uh, first of all, we had our uh, wedding registered under the Special Marriages Act. Then we had a church wedding. And then we had a Konkani and me. We had a Tamil Brahmin wedding. So um, that was my parents and um, they organized it. My husband and I were both busy with work. We literally just landed in time for the wedding. And it was done to the best of their ability. And we actually held the Hindu ceremony in my parents' home, which is a Christian home. Smriti, that is an amazing story. It really is. Thank you for sharing that with us. You know, but I don't want to sugar gloss this issue either. The Tanishq advertisement has been released in, in the India of 2020, a very different India from that of the 70s and the 80s when your parents got married, when Smriti's parents got married. And the message sent via the trolls 
post the Sunish episode is that a sympathetic view of inter-religious marriage is unacceptable and the reality also is that it's not always a bed of roses. It's not always a story of how love eventually triumphs. So Athira and Shameen, they are the most newly wed of all of our guests today. Athira, uh, thank you for joining us. You met 14 years ago and you got married in December 2019. But on the days before your wedding, instead of having the luxury of being preoccupied with the usual bridal worries of trousseau, gharara, sharara, sari, fitting, whatever it was, basically enjoying the moment, you had to deal with a lot of unnecessary ugliness and your freedom to choose was threatened. Tell us about that. Yes. So this happened uh, a month before our wedding uh, when we had to... Uh, apply for our uh, uh, marriage under the Special Marriage Act. There is a provision where you have to apply 30 days prior to your wedding and uh, our applications will be uh, posted on the registration offices of both our uh, home, uh, registration offices close to both our homes for 30 days and apparently anyone who has got an objection to this can raise it and sure. that would be considered. Uh, what happened is that after we applied for our marriage, uh, applications along with 100 other applications of uh, people who have filed their marriage under Special Marriage Act were um, on uh, Facebook. And the application contains our uh, address, our photograph, and uh, what our occupation is. Uh, and uh, a lot of uh, right-wing extremist uh, groups were talking about how um, uh, they should form groups and they should go to the girls' homes because all these girls must be getting married without their parents' will, and they should counsel their parents to ensure that this wedding is avoided. Um, so we we obviously, um, uh, you know, reported this on Facebook, and Facebook pulled down these posts as well, but then it moved to WhatsApp. So until then, we had not informed our parents, but uh, one fine day, my mom forwards me a WhatsApp, which says that in Kerala, Love Jihad is back, and it had PDF applications of around 125 couples who were who had registered under SMA. Um, so that uh, definitely was not a, a, a nice situation to deal with. Uh, but we were very busy with our wedding and you know we waited for 13 years. We didn't want anything to ruin our wedding. So we did focus on the wedding. But after the wedding, um, the, uh, the Kerala chief minister's daughter um, had gotten married uh, to another politician uh, who is a Muslim. And uh, the kind of hate that was spread on Facebook against this couple made me write about it. And that, that got a lot of couples who are going through the same challenge reach out to me and they told me about how um, uh, these right-wing groups had gone to their homes and threatened their families and they did not know what to mm. do or how to deal with it. Um, it is only after doing a little bit of research we understood that uh, the, as part of the digitization mission that the Kerala government had undertaken, they had put these applications on the website, which made it very easy for the extremist groups to download and put it on uh, Facebook. It's a clear case of doxing. Um, the moment we reached out to the minister, uh, he uh, took notice of it, and in two days, he ensured that these details are removed from the website. Hmm. So, yeah, it, it has been a, a struggle, but we were just glad that... Uh, we finally ensured that no longer in future any couple who want to get married will have to face uh, this situation where their documents are public. But still, uh, this 30-day notice period where your application is posted in front of the registration offices still creates a, a safety threat as well as a, a privacy violation for all the families mm. um, who are uh, getting married. Okay, um, interesting. So, um, Natasha, if you could come in over here. Uh, Natasha, you're Hindu, you're married to a Muslim and you've written extensively about how blessed you are that you, you know, you have wonderful in-laws who've been very supportive, very loving, very warm. Um, so, I don't want to touch on that, but, but what was interesting, what struck me in uh, um, Ath Athira's, uh, Athira's uh, story is that these so-called activists, they went to the girl's house. So they think that it's the girl who is probably getting married without her parents' uh, consent or it's the girl who is, you know, is naive or and possibly like, which is probably what you faced a lot, it's the woman who is, there's a misogynistic and paternalizing attitude, right, towards interfaith marriages and for women. That it's the woman who is gullible, the <coughs> woman is not intelligent enough, she cannot make this choice, how can she be marrying a, a, a Muslim man, I mean, he surely must be hoodwinking him. 
Uh, absolutely. So this uh, very much derives from the idea on which, you know, all uh, arranged marriages in every community in India are based on that young people do not have, uh, should not have the autonomy to choose who they marry, that marriages are not about love, they're not about what uh, young people want for each other, they're not about couplehood. A marriage is about, uh, you know, find, uh, connecting to another family with the right caste, right class, right religion, uh, right address, uh, right bank balance, etc. And uh, so this is a kind of control that is not new. You know, it's, it's a kind of control that uh, in Southeast Asian uh, countries, um, we have seen for centuries and particularly, uh, you know, the last century. Um, so any love marriage, any marriage where people choose who they want to marry is a resistance to that. And I think that it is really the responsibility of each person who wants to exercise their own autonomy to take a stand. Not all of us are going to fall in love with somebody of the other religion. And, you know, uh, if we look back at uh, our, our first meetings with our partners, it's not religion that you're noticing. It's, it's you know, that's, that comes much later in the picture when you are trying to connect your families or when, uh, you know, when you, when you realize that there is resistance in your family. Interesting point. Uh, when you first meet, it's not religion that you're noticing. Let's ask Zara Raj Parwal. Uh, because Zara, uh, you are a Muslim woman married to a Hindu guy who works, I think is your husband is sitting with you, uh, who works in IT. And you're especially important to this conversation because as you're a Muslim woman married to a Hindu guy, because you know, that is the stick the right wing fundamentalists like to beat, right? That, um, uh, as I pointed out in uh, Natasha's case, but you met through Facebook. So at that point of time, so when you met through... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. So uh, when you know you you the name pops up, right? That's the first thing. And I'm assuming did you meet just as friends, or did you meet because you were looking for a, a love interest, or uh, you were seeking love? And then did the name, the fact that he had a Muslim name, or the fact that you had a Muslim name in your husband's case, did that uh, you know set off any red alerts? Or what did that make you feel like? Well, actually, uh, we met as friends because we had common friends, and. Uh, Religion was not even an issue for us. It was so organic. We really liked each other. I come from a family where there are multiple interfaith marriages, and they're all very happy, and uh, they they have their own uh, uh, you know traditions that they follow. So it really wasn't a concern for us. And uh, religion only came into the picture when we decided to get married, and we introduced our families. And our families were so accepting and loving and accommodating that uh, the, the, the differences actually never really divided anybody. There was an effort made from both our parents and our extended families to come together to celebrate us and uh, to be on the same platform. Uh, is why when the Tanishq ad happened, uh, I, I did put out a tweet which was purely to say that every story is unique and every story entirely depends on the journey you've had, the family you have, the education you've had access to, the uh, socio-economic background you may have, and Tanish decided to depict mm. one kind of a story. And we are boycotting something or the other every single day on Twitter. So it's become a trend almost to boycott something. If you don't relate to it, it's okay. It could be somebody else's story. It could be my story. It could be, you know, uh, the story of my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Okay, uh, every day we're boycotting something or the other. Dr. Kostav Deka is also joins us. He's also uh, had an interfaith uh, marriage. Dr. Kostav Deka yeah. uh, married to a, a Christian woman from the Northeast. But doctor, uh, you're also yeah. a professor. So uh, yeah. let me ask you to put this into context, right? This outrage sure. culture, as uh, Zara's talking about, it's not yeah. new. It hasn't, it's not, not happening only now. We drove MF Hussain away. True. We led to the banning True. of Salman Rushdie, Rohinton Mysteries book, Zipa Mehta's fire. This has been going on since True. the 19s, vandalizing museums and art galleries. And now Absolutely. the problem is their social media to magnify yeah. it and make it seem like it's the majority view. True. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're absolutely right, uh, Sarah, because actually the whole issue, it's uh, 
social media has taken it to a different dimension altogether. But as uh, my previous uh, panelists have, have very rightly mentioned, I mean, uh, there are so many stories and this is what is the point, the point that we had to really emphasize on. And when I tweeted about uh, this ad, I gave it a thought whether I should actually venture into that or not. Hmm. And then I realized, I mean, uh, at one point when I got married, because since we are talking about our stories today, and I do believe uh, in personalist political uh, very seriously. And uh, when actually I married, I'm being uh, in the background of Assamese Hindu and my wife uh, from a background of being uh, Christian Naga. I really did not think that we have done anything significant. We are mm -hmm. just two young people who met in a metro that is Delhi. We are at that point. And we clicked like uh, my other students today are sharing for common things like we would share a lot for tracking. Uh, about music books like any other people. So I never really thought that it is something to be talked about one day in the nation. But sadly, uh, today, I mean, it's yeah. up to such a point yeah. that, you know, we are happy to share our domestic case. And um, yeah, you are absolutely right. So insignificant, something truly personal. And here I am, yeah. we have reached a stage where I have to make you come here and share these personal intimate yeah. moments of, of your absolutely. lives on national TV yeah. because we need to do it to support each other and to, and to have control over our own narratives. Yeah. So Shamim, then, uh, yeah. Shamim, doctor, um, the professor here uh, points out that he he thought for a second about whether he should tweet after this Tanish Gad, right? Similarly, for both of you, you got married, marriage was over, you could have moved on, but you chose to speak up and you chose to say that, look, I'm going to share my story so that this doesn't happen to other people. Yeah. yeah. So, um, hello. Hashim, Hashim, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, when the marriage happened, uh, we had the experience with Atra share. Uh, so, we primarily want to come forward and share our experience just to let others know, like, uh, what are the struggles that uh, interfaith marriage people are facing. And maybe um, if we could show them that there is a way, like, you need not be worried about what is going around the world or people trying to. Uh, put unnecessary pressure on you. Mm. Uh, so this was a primary motive. Like we, uh, we thought we'll come forward and then speak up. Yeah. All right. And Zara, I'm sorry, I don't know your husband's name, but he has joined you. He's sitting by your side, supporting you tonight on this show. So, uh, you, you know, uh, a quick word to you again about, uh, I think as Athira pointed out, that once we stand up against those who are propagating this bigotry, they will then become irrelevant. Why have you chosen to come um, on the show? So, my husband's name is Nikhil and uh, he didn't even know I tweeted this uh, about this, that, you know, people have to come out with their stories and own their life journey. We don't need to hide about it. So, uh, Nikhil, did why did you then decide to join us? Because we weren't informed that you were going to join us. Only Zara was supposed to. I absolutely am in support. Uh, I was in support of the tweet and I have always wanted to uh, stand by all her decisions. I think uh, it is very necessary that we speak up. We speak yeah. up for change. We speak up for um, letting people know that we're moving forward. We aren't moving backwards. We need to rise above these things of, of you know, comparing everything and taking judgment and taking opinions based on religion and caste and creed. Um, so I was in office when I actually saw the tweet and uh, and I liked it and I retweeted it. And it was only after 24 hours that we realized that, you know, um, and then when we saw that we were getting trolled and we realized that, you know, why is this happening and what, what is the real reason behind people drinking so much hate uh, towards something that is so sweet that was portrayed in the ad. Alright, so last me, lastly then, you know, let me ask, do any of you have kids? I know Natasha does. So let me ask you, Natasha, you know, art, you uh, have been a filmmaker, you're a writer, you're an author, art imitates life. This pushback against the Tan Tanishq ad isn't happening in a vacuum. Right, that is the reality. As a parent, what do we, what do you tell your kids? How do you explain to them the world they're living in? What should we do going forward? So, to be honest, uh, children have extraordinary clarity about right and wrong. You know, so uh, my children have been uh, facing questions from uh, classmates where they've been asked if they're Pakistani where they've been asked, uh, you know, about how uh, their father is um, because children have from television learnt uh, to equate being Muslim with being a terrorist or being a Pakistani. 
so they've uh, grown up with this kind of uh, misog- uh, you know uh, this kind of bigotry and they've always kind of it hasn't it, it never hurts them you know they 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 just write it off they're like who are these people how can they even think like that Mm. and that was their reaction to the tanishk ad you know it was like have they started all over again and one of the things that i think we must say on this show is that this has this is a phenomena that we are seeing such a rise of because for the first time it has the mm-hmm. sanction of the state we have a state that is unsympathetic to the idea of secular india and that is the problem a lot of the trolling a lot of the trolls are actually followed by our own leaders so instead of them you know so people are actually rewarded for pushing hate on social media and that's a new phenomena and that's what we have to really resist and push back correct All right, we're we're winding to a close. So let me just get Smriti back in. Uh, Smriti, I want to ask you, you again, uh, as a journalist now uh, who writes extensively on various issues, um, the withdrawal of the Tanishq ad. Uh, what did that make you feel like? Because in a sense, when Tanishq withdrew this ad, it was an acceptance uh, and a denial of this narrative of our reality. All of all of the panelists here, this part of India, this reality of India, it was a denial of that. I I don't know if it's a wise move for Tanish to pull back the ad in terms of taking a stand. I mean, uh, I don't think it's right. Once you've taken a stand, you've got to stand by it, no matter what. Uh, the entire point of a stand is that you know you're going to do it in the face of a certain amount of opposition. Um, but that said, you know, uh, I feel like uh, the kind of aggression that Tanish would face and the kind of violence that they were exposing themselves to. it's sort of unfair to ask them to take one for the secular or the liberal team it's it's unfair for a guard standing at a tanishq showroom or a sales person standing there to have to face violence for um, for something that perhaps they don't believe in i mean i mean we're putting somebody else in the front row in the firing line so i'm i i mean i see that the larger there is a larger point to be made and and that um, you know this is this is a this is a stand tanishq has to take and i don't know if liberals like us can can buy enough tanish to make up for um, perhaps the hit their sales would take but i i do think that um, no honestly i i know that they faced a lot of aggression and uh, i think one would have to be in their shoes to know why they did what they did one would have to be in their shoes that i think is a uh, an apt statement to end the show on everybody all of us in our country we need to think of putting ourselves in somebody else's shoes in the other's shoes before we act thank you all for joining us for sharing these personal very intimate moments your photographs for speaking up uh, at this point of time to show that you are the real india thank you we're out of time on we the people see you next week <laughs>